refugees turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Dire team <sighs> ban. OGs turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And welcome back to the Dota 2 Asia Championships 2017. We are ready for our second Dota draft, so we're going to get in there very quickly indeed for our second and final game of our fifth series of the day. OG going for the perfect clean sweep again for the second day in a row against LFY. Let's see whether they can come up with draft we've uh, also got ppd and remain. purge back here on the couch as well um we are expecting something a little bit more different yeah, but, but what are we going to expect i I, th I feel like og's is going to go with the flow of that game they they reacted as Reserve needed there was a bunch of really weird bands it was like all supports so yeah. they had to pick some weird heroes but i think they adjusted first four support uh, first i believe four bands so were all supports, yeah. weren't they? at least like two to four were yeah. definitely all supports all yeah. fly heroes so but he did completely fine just played lena so yeah. <laughs> it was fine. Yeah. That was something we didn't talk about actually. In the and we were, we were kind of expecting Fly to play the Wyvern. Um, slightly, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, I know Fly historically has played Lena as well. Yeah. I remember a game when he was on OG's maybe Cole, like Ti Five. Played he both. Yeah. Played some good he Lena. Definitely played both. I, I think it's actually just one of those heroes that Jarex like really enjoys. Really. He seems like you know he plays like a, more like four four kind of roles, but I think Wyvern's just. One of those favorites. He likes it. Remaining. Plays it. Okay, uh, we are into the draft. It is a Monkey King first pick uh, for LSY remaining. again, and uh, exactly the same bands as well. So, uh, I mean, that... that's not really mixing it up. It's not, but um, OG could go a completely different way. Last time they went Lena with Centaur, I believe. Yep. So they could do the same thing here. I think it's fine. Um, gives them two options. Centaur's just safe. Had a little bit of trouble last game um, getting as much farm as the Slaughter did, but. Same. I didn't see the order of the last game, but was it first pick for LFY? Yeah, well? uh, no, it was first pick for OG last time. First, pick, Centaur, first yeah. pick, yeah. Okay. Yeah, then OG might do something. It could go the same. I know S4, like. Behold the horn Seems of pretty Magnus. comfortable, isn't it? The other Centaur. The other, the other Centaur, Magnus. So maybe they'll consider grabbing their melee core right now. That way, what or, they want doesn't get banned. Or Coddle. Oh, that, that could work yeah. too. They got banned second yeah. phase last yeah, time. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, OG's got to be feeling pretty comfortable though. I feel like Reserve time. Pick one of the sport heroes and either Lena's Lena. nice because they can play us. Dire team pick. Yeah, we're making that point in the first game, aren't we, Kevin? It's, yeah. it's a nice second pick in a way, isn't it? Because it leaves it open, keeps the other team guessing, and they, they're already comfortable either way. They're comfortable with it. The, I mean, the minus 30 respawn second at 10 is really nice for supports yeah. as well as cores. Ten seconds I think remaining. Lion also has a respawn. Yeah, it's like 25 or 30, about the same. Yeah, Five like but not getting remaining. picked at all. No, well, I think it's interesting that he's a core because he gets level 10 so faster. But. Lion is cool too. I think Lion's probably a little. Up. The heroes, the heroes, are not bad. It's just the the, the the respawn duration thing is amazing. It's just like die in fights, and you have like a level ten, you have like a couple second respawn. Mm -hmm. Absurd. And yeah. It's like a lot of times you'll hit that timing as a support. You'll hit level ten. And it's like time people sort of on kind of a thing. So you have two lives. Usually I just use it to feed more rapidly, but... Well, it, it's it's multifaceted. You can use it in a lot of different ways, which, you know, he's a very versatile hero in that regard. Only downside is his, his laning's a lot worse. Lion definitely has some issues there. So we've got the Legion Commander this time around, so we have uh, changed things. Yeah, not in fight, though. So there's their, their three and four. Dire team back. We'll have to see if they decide to bolster that Legion Commander initiation was The outkit. I think that's fair. That's um, not Elk. a bad idea. Elk's kind of hard to kill in duels in some some cases anyways, so just uh, make him do regular course. 
Alchemist is just terrifying. Here. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, it just changes your game plan so much. You have to like adjust everything you're doing to Five beat him. So remaining. I feel like with Legion Monkey King, uh, LGD can do do like roaming duel lanes or just strong 1v1 matchups. I, I think it opens up their laning stage in a lot of good ways. I wonder if we could see kind of like that Legion silencer oh. combination. I don't know, yesterday I didn't like... Played that yesterday. I saw Legion coming. Oh. One of the IG team. OGs turn to I, I could be. There was someone I could be so wrong Someone right played now. the sun is I can't remember the... We saw a couple of silencers, yeah. and we saw a couple of LCs, so... Yeah. We saw them in the same... Yeah, it's a very <laughs> similar combo to Batrider. In the past, we've seen a lot of Batrider and silencers. It's kind of a scary combo. Especially when you're dealing with, like, de defensive supports. So, OG must know what they already want to combo with the Magnus, with the Jug Ban. I wonder if they'll take it here. Um, what's a melee core good against Legion? Like yeah, Sealer, exactly. I guess? Melee here that well, lands well versus Legion. I wouldn't say it lanes super well, but... Life Stealer, I mean, Life Stealer's fine. It's not bad. Probably maybe stay away from the Terrorblade. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. What about, like, Troll or something? They could do Troll. I'm not sure. I think No-Toe's gonna kind of get his pick of the litter. So he's gonna be able to just say, like, Fizer's gonna be like, hey, what here do you want to play? What, what melee here do you want to play? And No-Toe can kind of just say whatever he wants. Probably not an Illusion. That's yeah. what I would kind of stay away from against Legion. So we might not see that no tell PL, which is something he's played a lot in the past. Um, probably no Terrorblade. I'm, I'm just glad that we don't have Malini over here, otherwise he'd be yeah. uh, he'd be flipping out again as soon as you yeah. He's trashing PL, says he's one of the worst heroes. I kind of agree with him right now. I don't think he's great, but regardless, I know it's a no tell hero, and I feel like OG's in a position where they can... There you go, a nice prediction, but I feel like OG's in a position where they can kind of get a little creative and... Pick whatever they want to play. I just figured Troll was likely just because um, he's a little bit tankier than some of the other melee cores. Um, he's got blind that way. So he's got some solutions against Legion, throwing a little bit of lifesteal and bashing Legion. I feel like it's like, it's okay if you get dueled. It's not the worst. Whereas like TB, you have to Sunder to stay alive. Ember Spirit's kind of scary. You know, so you think, heroes like that. Do you think Lina will be a support then? Or do you think it's... I don't think it's predetermined just yet, okay. personally. Because like the Troll all kind of doesn't synergize perfectly well with Lina because she already gets so much attack speed. From her fervor? Yeah. Uh, Fiery Soul. Fervor Fire is soul. Troll's attack speed. Gotcha. With yeah, that yeah. said, though, I mean, with her stun duration and burst damage, it's it's fine. Like, yeah, it doesn't stack amazing. You're not going to buy a damage item on Lina, but... I mean, the, the combo here is art was uh, empower with melee hero. It's, it's sure. not doesn't really... It's not doesn't get much more deep than that. Her spirit's banned... What could we have for Jerax? Uh, Tusk? Could work. Disruptor. You know what's really disappointing? That Troll Warlord, the guy that fights with axes, oh, can't cut down trees with his skills. Pick. That just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Whirling axes, they spin in a circle. Yeah. Should just cut trees. Okay, so there's Disruptor. That's a, some of the team fight we thought they were missing in the last game. So I like that pick. Ten seconds remaining. It's not too bad against Magnus. Yeah, Empire showed the disruptors good. Okay. Could be oh, used well. Dire team pick. No yeah. way was that a prediction. It was more so just like I'd like to see him play Tusk. Okay. Mm. It's, for that. it's been getting a little popular the uh, last day or so. Yeah, we didn't just say today, today one, but today actually. we've yeah, seen Yeah, today. It's just a couple. I think you can roll. I think you can roll through disruptor all and grab Ten everyone inside, right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. Dude. That's not the hardest thing to execute. Well, there's got to be something on the other side. You have to not be in the silence. It has to be the right time to do it. Yeah, yeah, it could work. Uh, I, actually, the best part is probably snowball against duel. Really, it's like stand next to him, cast snowball, pull him in, <laughs> hold him there for three. It's a little bursty too. Um, it's good against disruptor. Pretty good against monkey king. Morphling. Okay. Troll's not super great versus Morphling. Yeah, I would agree. Not burst heavy enough. He can escape. Um, pretty good against RP, too. If he gets RP, he just starts morphing. As long as he survives to the RP, should be able to get out in most cases. Five seconds remaining. I wonder if we're going to see any kind of replicate combo for the Morphling side. They're going to do some, like, theorycrafted thing. 
Well, I mean, I just think the hero gains a lot of, a lot more strength when there's a replicate target form. In the past, we've seen Morphlings up Alchemists or Nagas or someone like mm -hmm. with the Radiance, or uh, we've seen Morphlings paired with Axe help the Morphling farm a lot more. I don't think an Axe would fit too well into their lineup. I just feel like they respect the hero enough, just what its base merits are, that they'll just go for just Morphling by himself. Sure. Uh, maybe if it was a Western team, I would maybe agree with you, but I feel like the Chinese teams are more likely just to grab it based on merit. Yeah, I just don't. I haven't seen the hero picked up that much. I guess from like on the Western yeah. side, it just seems like a hero that's not incredibly strong right now, or at least like not at like the upper echelon of carries. Yeah, I I don't think I've seen it touched at all by Western teams. It's all been Chinese teams so far that picked it. Any comment on the fifth ban, Roger? Five seconds remaining. Sniper uh, ban. Yeah. Sniper. Um, pretty good versus Lena mid, so uh, I I would Reserve imagine they're time. trying Just to get the can make uh, Blink Heroes have a nightmare too, base. So Magnus would have maybe have some trouble initiating if he got caught out of position. Um, would they'd be able to abuse people with like limps too? Back to end. To okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know how much I love it. I I think that the the mid lane is going to be a, an issue, right? Like Lena's going to free farm. Kind of walk all over Ember Spirit. What about Monkey King? Monkey King plus Ember versus Alina is so scary for Lena. Perhaps. We're going to have Tusk there, though, too. So, I think Tusk is roaming potentials a little bit better than Monkey King. At least, like, sitting in a static lane. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Maybe once or two, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, level I don't... one, I feel like Tusk is way worse. We'll see. But... We'll have to watch that matchup throughout the game. See how Jerex and, um... I think White is the Monkey King player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, see how so, the Coddling, I guess, oh. for some vision on the... Oh. ...in a couple of the matches that we've seen yesterday. I'm surprised Coddle wasn't banned. That's yeah. a really strong hero for them. Okay, thanks to both of you. Of course, we will get more view both PVD and Purge at the end of the match, but time now to head over to our commentary team, and I'll get it right this time. It is Lyricalist and Capital. <laughs> is, of course, going to be game number two, OG versus LFY. Cap, we saw a little bit of indecision, a little bit of hesitation from LFY in the last one. Mm -hmm. They kind of left a little bit out on the field of play. Um, I'm sure they would want to take some of that back. How are you feeling about the second draft? Is Morphling sort of that alternative greedy pick that they were going to be able to take now? Um, I, I think it'll fit LFY better, right? Yeah. If they draw out the game, it's good for them this time around because they do have the, the Morphling, harder carry that they're looking at. Um, OG do have some really great synergy, though. Um, they, first of all, have this Lino, who's going to have a free matchup in mid. They've got the uh, Magnus combined with Troll Warlord, which really speeds up his farm. He can do like Ancients and, and that sort of thing rather quickly. Right. Um, and then I think the Keeper of the Light was sort of the, the linchpin. It just, it feels very synergistic and it has a couple of counters. Um, for example, the, the Keeper of Light, great to have versus the Morphling to help burn through mana. The Blinding Light is very effective versus the Weezer Commander. Uh, there were a couple of other things I was thinking about during the draft, but I don't know. LFY's lineup just really doesn't click for me as as well. Yeah, it, it is a little bit clunky in there, but I do believe we're going to be hopping into the game now. Really excited to be seeing what happens. And the other thing, too, as, I, as I'm as i looking at the lineup and thinking about what we've seen throughout this tournament, it's been like a coddle dual lane, and they still could potentially run that if they wanted to. You start spamming out Illuminate there yep. with a Magnus, uh, and then do that pull camp as well, the hard camp that we've talked about a lot during the other casts that we've seen. Uh, do you think that's something that OG might be looking towards? Um. It possibly. Um, they could start off doing that and leave the troll uh, alone against the Legion Commander. Because um, the, the thing is that they also want the Tusk kind of roaming into that mid lane because that's where the Monkey King is also going to be hanging out. So uh, I'm not fully set on them doing the aggro dual lane um, like we've seen uh, from other situations where you would have a different support sitting in the safe lane. It all depends on what they feel like it is most beneficial, right? Is it more beneficial to um, get S4 that early lead and um, and make sure he's able to have a good time in his offlane right away? Uh, or is it better to try and shut out the Legion Commander and make sure there's nobody contesting Note Hill's safe lane uh, for Warlord farm? If they put Tusk in the bottom lane, it does leave an opportunity where White can make the first blood happen on Lina and mid and get the Ember Spirit a critical advantage that he, he desperately needs in this matchup. He needs um, a, a support to rotate in to give him a little bit of a boost. Yeah. 
No, and, and it feels like they're already a little bit set up, the Ember Spirit, uh, to have some of that vision over the mid lane. You saw that ward that was up on the high ground. Also worth noting, over on the right-hand side, the cliff was sentried uh, by LFY, and that was a little bit of a bait-out. There was a ward that was actually placed over on the high ground by the shrine. So nice little, you know, mind games going on from OG as Tusk placed that ward and then uh, was scouted after the fact. So This uh, this mid ward is, is so cool. Um, yeah. We were here for WESG, mm -hmm. and we were playing uh, Pubs at Land Cafe, and we discovered this ward. And yeah. They were playing it. They, cut, they kill a tree, and then they put it here, and right if you look at the vision, it's really good. It covers over mid. It's also highly unlikely to be countered unless they notice that the tree has been cut down. It doesn't um, block the camp, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't block the camp. Uh, wow. It sits just on the outside of that, but it also covers uh, what I really like is it covers this little area right here, which is very common um, for supports who are making the rotation over um, so they can get a little bit of an early point. So I think it's just a, such a cool thing to play down. See if it can help out here. Ana is going to be scouted out. Light Strength Ray is going to connect, and Chain's actually really early aggression. They are going to die for this super tanking the tower, and well, he's going to fall, but. I guess he draws first blood. LFY, with they, with they, his dying breath, he's like, worth it. <laughs> first blood, baby. They're, they are not going to rest on their laurels this game. I feel like that's a statement death right there. Yeah, I, I mean, I said that was like, if you put Jarex in the bottom lane, uh, this is potentially what could happen, is that the first blood's going to go the way uh, of mid because the, the Monkey King wants to be able to shut down the Selena, and Ember needs the extra help. And Ember is also a hero that really takes advantage of a support rotating in because he does have such good offensive power, um, even if the static laning phase is not to his favor. That being said, it's not the, the end of all worlds. I'm sure Jarex is going to be still rotating into mid lane at some point. And Lina is obviously another hero that if he can get that snowball ice shards block in. Nice block at bottom, though. Yeah, on to Jaysing, trying to this bring him close. down. This is going to be a good bit of damage. Jarex not quite going to be able to run him down as of yet. And they're actually going to find a kill on Ana again in the mid lane. No. So, caught that right there with the little camera and camera. Also, we've been seeing some aggression that happened up in the top side, but this is going to be Jisung using his shrine. They're actually going to think about diving further. <laughs> there is no rest at all. People wanting to get aggro in this one. Yeah, apparently poor Legion Commander can't even just chill out and farm because they want to shove her away from this big creep wave that came in, right? It, it had double creep, uh, it, it had double range creeps, and it had probably like six melee creeps. That's a lot of experience. He went from uh, not quite having level two to now being level three, and it's actually going to be level three and a half with this next wave coming in. They really wanted to shove him away, but there's only so much that they can actually do. Yeah, and I mean, taking a look at the CS across the board, it's relatively even. Uh, all of the players basically at the same points. The the big thing is that Lina's maybe being a little bit further behind Super uh, here in the mid, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal as long as they don't keep on diving in on the Monkey King. That's the big thing is that the kills are still Somebody racking help up. Anna. And, uh, help. Anna is not going to get any help. They've got the chains again in a second, are going to be able to dive this one. Does do a light strike array, He's breaking good. the flame guard, so saving himself there. Yeah, with that uh, the early level of Slight of Fist, maybe if he had Flame Guard, would it be 200 Magic Absorb? And then that would be, yeah, he would actually have 10, uh, 10 Magic Shell or whatever left on his Flame Guard, so he would still have the damage over time available. He did not hit that chain. Oh, so. he did not. Hmm. Unfortunate there. Ana going to get away again. So, I mean, it's still been so much pressure there in the mid lane. Now S4 up top. Just going to keep on being zoned, but not sure if they realize that flies in the area as well. They should, and Illuminate Spam is going to continue. Yeah, he's been here all laning phase. Uh, so I'm sure they do know. S4 is sitting at 7, 4 plus another 3 S. Oh, man. Another kill down bottom. They do manage to block him out just enough to be able to get that kill. So that This is pretty much the, the lane that I expect to go quite well for S4. He's not actually getting quite as much as the S as, as oh, but... Um, it's just that the problem is Disruptor's such a poor laning hero, so it's pretty much kind of just a morphling by himself. I imagine that Magnus is going to be very powerful. You have the Monkey King that's sort of stalking that top side now as well. They could try and make something with that, although it is going to be LPC going to pick up the Bounty Rune. Uh, maybe now that they're going to bring back in the Disruptor, S4, possibly in a little bit of trouble. They're going to go with that slow for the moment. They do have another Boundless Strike if they want to use it, as well as, uh, of course, the Waveform forward. Kinetic Field's been dropped. S4 in a lot of trouble and out of mana, out of time, out of life. 
Uh, maybe Derek can turn things around. Monet is not really the target because he still has that strength more. Yeah, and they're not going to be able to run him down as of yet, at least. Oh, but the blast. kinetic field, it's really low, but it's not going to be enough to find the kill. Monet's still sticking around on such low HP, but they are going to be able to find that kill onto Jerickson. Well, Fly is still here as well. They can start life stealing off of this if they want. OG continuing to dive for this. S4 has come back in, oh, trying to him. bring down Monet. They do have another right click, and that's going to be enough to find the kill. Double for S4. LFY got a bit too greedy there. Uh, they've just been like content with the, the two kills that they got and just back away. S4, though, comes back in, cleans up two kills, is now level four. We're re reaching to level five, almost has arcane boots as well. That was a huge win for him to be able to come back and, and get all that. OG have pretty much won uh, two lanes. They've won their, their off lane, they've won their bottom lane. They're just kind of sacrificing it at mid as at Lena. Um, and he's still not doing badly when it comes to CS. He's 24 and 1. Absolutely. He's having himself a, a pretty fine game, particularly since there's been all this movement away from his lane now. The, the movement up there by the Monkey King has allowed him to stay even or even catch up a little bit on farm uh, compared to Super and almost level 6. Do you think that he's going to start trying to get aggressive with that Laguna Blade up or just keep the threat of it there in lane and farm more? Mm, not sure. Fly? Yeah, he's dead. Um... I think both these spin players want to be able to get uh, aggressive. I'm gonna die again. It Not seems, again. It seems very likely if Monkey King sticks around. White is actually gonna head off towards the rest of the jungle. Wanted to secure himself a bounty rune, but isn't gonna happen. It's four in the meanwhile, trying to break down and kill off this camp that he's stacked up. Actually, both of them are stacked. I kind of think Super would love to make a rotation down to bottom lane um, as G-Sing gets his level 6 and they have the duel. Um, it'd be a great play if they can actually make a rapid rotation over where they get aggressive on the troll. Um, not just for the duel damage, but also being able to shut down No-Tail. Troll is a, a hero that does not farm particularly well. Um, he's just a very strong laning phase hero and builds a, through a constant of not dying having some hero kills and, and always being able to have presence uh, around lanes. So if they can actually, you know, kind of shut him down just a little bit, I think it would do wonders for their mid games. See, walking through, it's a little pass by Fly and now gonna try and start racking up the damage. Monet is still in the area, but Fly is not long for this world. Also gonna get the Jingu stacks up now for White. A very free lane for these supports. They could leave if they wanted to. S4, um, part of the reason Kato was alone in lane is that S4 is clearing through a, a big old stack right now. It's got the Arcane Boots and already another 750 gold, so they're going to get him a, a very fast Blink Dagger, it looks like. And he's also going to have very fast higher levels of power as well, uh, thanks to all the experience that he's being granted. That Empower will then translate into more farm, faster farm for No-Tail. So the... The synergy is pretty good for OG's lineup, but LFY are doing some things really well. I think they're they're rotating really well in their Monkey King. White's being a monster right now and keeping poor Anna down. Um, G-Sing is getting some okay farm in his offlane. It's obviously not going to compare to Magnus, but it, it, it's more about him just getting what he needs. Well, they're going to pull back in, fly again, and waveform forward. A couple more right clicks. Quite low off of that one, but no points in Adaptive Strike means Monet will not be able to find that kill. God, Kato's just so quick right now. Oh, are they going to get that kill? I, uh, there's the Boundless Strike. Nice pickup. They're doing all right when it comes to the Disruptor's experience. That's something I usually try and keep an eye on because he's such a lackluster support until he gets level 6. So, looks like mid, Anna's going to die again. Oh, they're trying to bring him down, and that is not going Whoa. to end up happening. So nice. low. They use that boundless strike on the Coddle, the long cooldown. Yeah, they used the glimpse earlier on, on the Coddle, and that also is a long cooldown, so that wasn't up either. So, that. Damn, Anna. It's by the skin of his teeth. Good. I mean, he needs to stay alive in these runs. So it's, it's felt to me like OG are still in a really good spot here. They're getting the levels, getting their farms, and it's always going to be a threat. The Empower and, you know, combination that comes out from Magnus with an RP. Uh, it's scary stuff. A nice little pull here as well. Get the stack of Ancients. Good job of maintaining the farming efficiency around the map, OG. Yeah, I, I think both teams are kind of okay with just farming up the lane, realizing the jungle. Uh, it's just a question of, of what points does Super want to get aggressive. For mid-Ember Spirits, you wait for the... Oh, All right. 
Oh, here's a duel down. They're going to be able to find this kill, so nice. a bit of dual damage there for the Legion commander. It's interesting. I, I really thought he was going to be going the Veil of Discord. He was going to be uh, moving around aggressively with the um, Legion commander and with the Monkey King and, and finding kills on this Ember Spirit, but he's actually going through to travel first and focusing more on farm efficiency. Yes, I do think that they want to draw out the game and split pushing with the Ember Spirit can buy a lot of space between him and, and the Morphling, but I, I do think that there is a certain point where you want to get uh, aggressive with this Ember Spirit and make use of his heavy burst damage at 15. Maybe they don't feel comfortable yeah. fighting into to OG, though, because OG do have a lineup that are very adept at, uh, at fighting with the core and Lina so early on. Like, that is one of the cores that's going to peak the earliest uh, in this current meta, and Magnus is not too shabby thanks to all the extra farm he's gotten from the game. And talking about what something the panel alluded to as well, the, the snowball saves from Jerex. You go in on one particular hero with the duel, and suddenly you're not going to be able to find that kill if he's in the correct spot. So it could be tough there as well. In the meantime, OG continue to push out, spamming the wave with Illuminate. Coddle's going to keep getting so far, but a snowball aggressively in the thing, but there's going to be the turnaround now. Shards already out to try and block it off, but it's not going to end up mattering. They're onto the Troll Warlord, starting to drop low, and is going to be able to find that kill. Legion picking that one up. Yeah, do you think uh, they already had the smoke rotation coming in from the Monkey King and Ember Spirit, so he was trying to put himself in a position where uh, he was kind of baiting a little bit, trying to see if OG go on him. Sure enough, they oblige and get a big kill on the Troll Warlord. First successful rotation. It's a big one. Monet still is going to farm too, and, and how scary is this hero in this type of game with no silences, basically? Yeah, they they need Anna. That That's part of the problem that I had with them not supporting Anna more, is I think Anna does need to have a really good game because he's one of the biggest threats to the Morphling. You get Bloodstone Shadow Blade, and you could just pop out, um, you stay in biz, and you leave with Light Strike Array. It's a great way to surprise a Morphling and quickly burst him down when he's trying to farm with high agility stacks. But still, though, maybe they just had faith that Anna was going to be able to make the comeback because he's really didn't miss too much of the beat. He's sitting at 4,200 gold uh, despite having died twice. Yeah. Well, he's still going to be able to get in towards that Bloodstone in a decent clip. You do have a big rotation up here by OG, and it looks like Coddle trying to make sure that he secures that bounty rune, but Monkey King already in the area. Over by the other rune, it's uh, super getting aggressive towards Jerax. He's going to try and go for nice the Remnant dodge. forward, able to dodge away from that Light Strike Ray, and they do find the kill onto that Tusk. White Pump faked the ulti, but did not go for it in the end. Let's see, the Disruptor, they do have their level 6. They have yet to use Static Storm. So uh, I, would, I wouldn't even mind like another smoke play. Oh, they actually have an Invis rune for super. So this is a great rotation behind the mid area. They have a replicate here. So Monet is here. They're onto S4 already. Gonna jump forward onto him. Static Storm is down. This is going to be a kill now onto the Magnus. Looking for more. There's gonna be the jump forward by the Ember possibly. Uh, they don't even need to go for it. They're just gonna kill off Lina. So that's two cores down. LFY are looking great again. I like that LPC played that very safe and threw out the Static Storm very early on the Magnus to make sure there wasn't um, some sort of RP or even uh, just a skewer play from that Magnus. You know, locked him in, made sure they get that one kill, and then obviously with the positioning and the number of heroes that they had, they could just turn it into more. The glimpse of Anna, so. LFY's looking really strong. OG's main time, like, it's similar to the way LFY we're kind of looking at uh, game number one is that their big peaks are going to be around 25, 30 minutes. So suffering pre-15 minutes is not the worst thing in the world for them. It does mean their mid game is going to come to a little bit of a rocky start, though. Whoa, no tail. Taking that big old stack of ancients. And this is certainly going to help them. I mean, that's the big thing is that if they can still get in to the items that they need, it doesn't stop that timing push that they're going to want to hit. Uh, I do worry, though, that if maybe LFY start moving around, finding more of these pickoffs, that's going to put a hamper on their timing, and then they fall into a position where they're always playing for the mine. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. That one hurt. Sorry, S4. Don't worry, nobody saw it. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, well, No Tail's going to have, he's going to pick up the SNY, but they have SNY, Vlad's, that's a really big peak. Another one is going to be when he finishes up the BKB as well. Um, OG seemed to just be pretty content to play around No Tail's farm at this point. 
We do have that Blink Dagger for the Legion oh, Commander. And there's a jump up in the top lane already there. Monet is going to be turned upon the Legion Commander. Waveform forward, excuse me, the Lena, and she is going to end up dropping in a second, possibly? Maybe not. They can't quite kill him off. And the Snowball forward and going to be able to get the Walrus Punch onto White. The rest of LFY is wrapping around. I don't know if this is a bait so much as just trying not to be a desperate situation. They are able to kill off that Morphling. Static Storm a little bit too late. And now, I don't know if they're going to be able to find these kills. Coddle gets the Blinding Light pushback. Super is going to try and chase him down, but they've already lost the two cores. So to me, this is a kill you have to get, but it's really not that worth it. Yeah, losing their Morphling was really bad. To be fair, though, they should have lost their Morphling a lot sooner. The missed LSA there from Anna uh, really hurt them a lot. They were looking to just quickly get a, a burst kill on a Morphling and then move from there. Uh, all around, a little bit rocky for both teams, but LFY... Got the Veil of Discord coming in for this Ember Spirit, and he has the Boots of Travel. All their timings seem to be solid. Um, they just have to weather the, the mid game where the troll. This troll is going to just be awesome. He, he's going to get his SMY. He's going to have a huge stat pool. He's going to survive through burst damage, and he's going to have the attack damage to burrow down towers and. Coddle did so much in this fight, too. That blinding light, it allowed Ana to stay alive a lot longer. Yeah. So necessary. Nonetheless, still, there was, uh, you know, a good couple of kills there, and you know, Ana dying so quickly and then immediately coming back again, the respawn time there. Man, that Static Storm was so close to being really good. Yeah, I know. It was like three heroes, and the Kinetic Field just couldn't lock them in in time, and all of them managed to get out. Lincoln's money is almost there. He can start split pushing a lot more aggressively once he does have that item. You have to worry a little bit about the Magnus RP. Other than that, no other real big threats from OG until they have um, maybe Shadow Blade and maybe even a Yules to break the Lincolns or something like that. The other thing to keep in mind, you almost have the Blade Mail completed on that Legion. He needs that one last component, about a thousand gold away. 40 ghoul damage. This is a hero that can get out of control very quickly. And if you get to the point where you can solo pick off supports with one duel and don't even need somebody else, the the coddle, the even the Lena is, is just gonna have a really tough time. Yeah, for sure. Oh, we see Midas as well on that disruptor. Can't blame him too much for it. Ang's upgrade is on disruptors. Oftentimes, looked as just kind of like luxury. Like, oh yeah, if you can get it, that's really cool and everything. But it's not really the the point of the hero. But I do believe LFY are, are planning to push this game pretty late. They'd like their disruptor to remain as relevant as possible. So, how do you think you OG are feeling about this game right now? Are they still in at least a somewhat comfortable spot because they've got like the empower troll to fall back upon, or is that kind of a, a little bit too? not good enough compared to what the Morphling's doing. Uh, I, I feel like both teams are kind of comfortable just because we haven't hit that big moment where OG should take over the game and how successfully they do so we'll have to wait and see. Coddle just drops there in the jungle. S4, they're diving for this one, man. He's not afraid of anything and it's going to be contained inside the shards now. He's blocked off oh. from the rest of his team. They do drop the Static Storm. A little bit of a zoning one. Not often you say that unironically. Actually was. Yeah, I kind of saved Jinxing, I guess. I think he just kind of hoped they didn't really have a vision over there that he was going to catch somebody and help save his buddy at the same time. Not really the case, though. Morphling bounces back up in top lane, which is pushing in. I think Troll, does he have his S and Y coming in? Yeah, the same is coming in now. So with the S and Y complete, that's the big stat upgrade. The healthy amount of strength he has. Oh, they're actually going to try and get a quick kill now. They're on top of him. A good pushback, though, means that not all those remnants hit. They still find the kill. There's going to be the RPS for trying to turn this, but no kill's already down. So they are going to lose two for the side of LFY in the midst of all that craziness. It looked for a second like it was actually going better for them, but they find another kill onto LPC. So OG able to turn that back around. Yeah, you could see it's just like that. That was the troll. They had a hard time killing the troll before he actually had um, the the Sanj in his inventory. I think he picked it up like halfway through. Um, it, it's just like this hero is going to be really tough for them to be able to crack. And even when they get the right kind of initiation, they blow everything they have on him. Um, he still doesn't fall immediately. So that this is the problem that I kind of foresaw. It's going to be coming up for LFY. Yeah. Um, but this is also just the timing of the lineup. 
LFY have plenty of options to play around. They can go ahead and split push pretty heavily. They're going to also um, see if they can break apart OG. Smoke plays here and there. That's, a, that's another duel. Yeah, they're there on top of them. Going to be able to secure that one. Last time the Troll Warlord ended up getting the dual damage, but up to 50 more now for Juicing and getting, again, closer to that Blade Mail. Still a little ways away. Last set of creep waves should be able to secure it, though. Five successful duels by 20 minutes is really impressive. This is, uh, this is like the hero for yeah. Juicing. This is the hero that he's known for the most, uh, and we're really seeing why he has an act for finding these openings and is going to translate into a, a third core really nicely. Sometimes you see Legion Commanders and they just fall off late game because um, what happens is they didn't get the dual damage early, and it just if you get that early dual damage, it allows you to start snowballing, you get more and more dual damage, etc. Um, so it looks like this game is going to be a great game. They can rely on this here for the late game. It does put a lot more pressure on OG, reaching about 40, 45 minutes. they got to be thinking, can this single core troll really hold up when we're dealing with three cores that are all going to scale really well? Now Radiant scan there, and they realize that people are heading down to try and deal with No-Tail. He's still going to stick around in this area. Uh-oh. Maybe not anticipating that LPC is there. There's the <laughs> glimpse that back. not the glimpse play. Well, they still have vision on, but yeah, that, that's a little bit unfortunate. They're not going to be able to find it because of that. That's the second glimpse that has been really bad. The last one was on the, the Tuscan, and it didn't look really bad. Um, but he could have gotten an extra free kill if he had just waited on the glimpse timing a little bit more and pulled the Tusk back into Wukong's command. Um, he just used it too early. That one obviously helping the troll escape. Well, you win some, you lose some. As Lena finishing off that Bloodstone, up to 15 charges as well, and has that damage talent now. So Anna going to continue to scale and become a stronger right-click damage healing, healing hero. Uh, there was some movement towards Roche earlier, but OG not wanting to step too far forward and uh, you know put themselves in a precarious spot. Still, the storyline is Monet farming. What's he sitting on now? Ghost Scepter, working on that Ethereal Blade. What's nice in this game is that uh, Ethereal Blade is, is not just like the extra bit of burst damage when you get a dual target or something like that, but it can be a saving mechanism for whoever the troll is going on. He could actually save an ally by putting them in the Ethereal state. Well, it could also lead them explosive to Lena and Kato, but yeah. you know, sometimes you don't make some risks. Risky plays like that. I'm with you. That Blade Mail 2 just going to be so effective against the Troll. Mention Velina eventually, too. That sort of last cannon type of hero that we've been seeing her turn into. Kind of feeling, again, like LFY, do they need to just try and play the pickoff game constantly? Like, do you need to focus down any one particular hero, or is it just based off of whoever shows in the lane? Mm, it, I think it's more about what opportunities present themselves when you split push OG break apart. So whenever you get bottom lane and top lane pushed out, naturally OG are, are going to have to show probably two heroes, and that's where your openings uh, present themselves. I, I don't think there's any one here. Like, obviously, they'd love to be able to kill the troll, but oftentimes troll is he's, he's going to be tough to crack, and there's oftentimes going to be allies surrounding him. Lena would be a great, you know, real quick one-two, but Anna's not really playing on that unless he's got heroes around him. Very similar scenario to the troll, so... I, I, I think they just continue to farm. If they see an opportunity for a pickoff, they're great, but instead, just keep more flint. Go, go, go. I really like the Lena build this time. We've seen a couple different variations of it. Oki tends to go for the Shadow Blade after the Bloodstone, but this one into the Yules to save yourself, but also immediately afterwards into the, the Boots of Travel, so that that way you can die in the midst of a fight and then get right back into it. So it's like that sixth hero. And also you get the heals over for the rest of your team. Yeah, he's, he's got to address some of this split pushing that the Ember Spirit is going to be doing. Um, so I, I also like the Boots of Travel quite a bit. The Yules is helpful and it'll help deal with the, the Lincolns of the Morphling, but I, I did kind of think Shadow Blade was necessary um, to deal with both Morphling and Ember Spirit. They're both quick reaction escapers. I don't know if this is necessarily the fight that oh, well, I want to take. They're going to go for the duel, but there's going to be the RP trying to turn it back around. But Tusk is already gone. Wukong's command comes out as well. Jing Jing starting to follow, is going to die, but Monet able to take one in return. So No-Tail going to be dropped down. That glimpse a little bit better than the previous one. And Fly is going to fall because of it. Monet with the triple kill, almost completing his E-Blade. He is getting stacked up. I actually didn't see how LFY made that read to rotate so many heroes up to the top lane. Like, OG, they wanted to get aggressive and, and find a pickoff, and that's why they grouped up. I'm just not sure why LFY um, had so many heroes rapidly rotating up to that, that top lane and be in that vicinity. 
um, how they made that read, but it was it was definitely a solid one. Wins them a big team fight. Can actually take an objective themselves here, it looks like. It's still another 18 seconds on that troll. Yeah, and doing a lot of damage. You can see again, Cherex trying to bait this out, and there are a lot of heroes over in the area, but LFI realized what's going to come, and everybody in the area, nice little counter strike. I thought that it was going to be a little bit better with that RP, but... Yeah, they just didn't have the good follow-up. Damn, this one. Yeah, he's out of control now. He's got the ethereal blade. <laughs> like, he's got the first damage. He can blow up some of these squishier supports at a 1-2. With a little bit of assistance from a support, he can even blow up cores. This is the OG Nightmare. Pro Warlord still a good distance away from his BKB as well. Uh, is going to be looking towards that Mithril Hammer next, but in the meantime, he's just a, a walking target. He's still fairly tanky, but yeah, it, it hurts. Yeah, like comparatively, I think when you have uh, BKB on Troll, that is the strongest he will be. Like, it, obviously, he'll still scale into late game pretty well, but if you compare him to what LFY have in their pool and how they're going to be scaling into late game, um, that is their biggest peak for the trolls. So OG got to get a lot accomplished, in, in my opinion, in, in that window. LFY are going to continue to put pressure on OG. They just want a significant team fight in top, and they're not going to give OG a whole lot of time to recover, perhaps in part because that BKB is still down. Um, they do have RP, though, on S4. Goes out. S4 is they there. The duel immediately. They're all over these guys. Static Storm is down as well. But I'm not sure if it's going to end up being enough. Hella fly all over these guys. No chance trying to find this kill. Onda just saying he's going to be able to kill them back. And now the skewer onto two. S4 with the plays. Able to find it. Monet trying to get out. Does manage to get up to the high ground. But is he going to be able to TP away? No. They take him down. Four kill streak is broken by No Tail. That's a hell of a lot of gold to him. <laughs> it is tough to uh, to push into a team that has Lena. You know, because what happened there is they actually, Monet pops on uh, Anna. Yeah. Like, he got to that back lane, he killed him, and, and Anna instantly revived. Yeah. So it's like they had two buybacks. One was Anna instantly reviving, and then S4 actually buying back and getting that RP that resulted in this skewer, and, and obviously ended up winning them the team fight. But, uh, LFY, you got to be a little bit more cautious diving into those tier twos against a Lena strategy like this. It's much the Lena death and then immediately coming back. Hey guys, yeah. we're here. He's like back. All right, I'm TPing in. Instant buyback from S4 as well. He gets that two man RP in the back line. I mean, this is why the, they take this hero with the Troll Warlord, too, because you talk about that timing they're going to hit where he gets his BKB complete and they're going to be so much stronger. It's accentuated by the Lena. It's, it's so good. But. Also, LFY are going to realize that that's a thing, and I'm assuming try and play around the, the fights and avoid them whenever possible. Go for split push games. And you can see how far Monet, how far ahead he was, because when he got hit by that RP, I was like, all right, he's done. And he almost made it. He waveformed over the cliff. He TP'd out. He almost made it. It was like maybe a second shy of being able to get back to base. The fact that they did actually kill him no much to Ochi. If they failed in that, it would have been a buyback kind of wasted. You know? They they need that progression. They need the progression for S4. Like, S4 actually may need to turn into a little bit more damage dealer later on. Obviously, he needs to focus on his positioning right now. The Shadow Blade is still the best option for him. But talking later, he may actually have to pick up some EKB and try and be that right-click Magnus that we've seen in the early days of 7.0. So, Cap, we've got this uh, Aegis here on Troll Warlord. He has got in power. Sanji Nyasha, BKB completed. You, you said it doesn't get a whole lot more powerful than that. What are the objectives that you feel like he needs to take over the next couple minutes? Is it all of the Tier 2 towers? Is it just, like, one or two of them? Or is it more just dependent on how much farm they can get out of the map? And, again, it's, like, I think a, a couple of Tier 2s. I'm not sure if all of them is really possible. Just save him. Oh, oh my God. They got him. They're all I, over. I was going to say, just kind of leave him until G Sing is there to be able to get the dual damage. You know, it's just like, you know, just save him as this leftover that G Sing can gobble up uh, for the extra duel. But he did have to stop that TP. So they get the pickoff. Disruptor plays it safe just at the right time as OG were looking for a counter kill there. 
We've seen occasionally FN go for something on the Troll Warlord to do that's been like a Blink Dagger type of play to get really aggressive. It's like most Chaos doing like needs to be able to deal with that tool, which makes a lot of sense. And now moving from lane to lane. I mean, it's a lot of damage with the Lina mixed in the, the Troll Warlord. Trading tier two is okay for LFY. Again, I don't think they should be too eager to contest this Troll Warlord. He's got BKB and an ultimate orb. He's sitting at 2,500 HP. They are mass TPing back, but this tier two tower is already gone. I don't think they should try and stretch it as much. And there's still two minutes left on this Aegis. OG have been getting yeah. up to getting on their horse, moving around the map. Yep, so they've got two of the. the they're all three tier twos were up, right? So they've yeah. gotten two out of three so far. This Aegis. See, pick up that third one. Though I would actually prefer them to try and go high ground instead of working their way across the map since they do have a limited amount of time with this Aegis. Doesn't look like they like that idea. I, I mean, they, they need to maintain that pressure. It's interesting though because you do have the recall from Coddle. Yeah, so, so maybe they, they will actually still keep it up. He, is he close to Aghanim Scepter at this point, Coddle? Yeah, he's uh, 9. Oh, oh, no, no. He actually had the extra bit there, so. This is a Got really great time. Me. Yeah, one and a half minutes. They're there, Walrus Punch to start this. Snowballing through, dealing damage. LFY, are the Ooh. wheels coming off? That's 60 seconds with no Legion Commander. They're going to go high ground with this. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. Did Oji just find a win? What? Maybe. This All is right. going to be really close. Amone pops the BKB. He turns to fight White, trying to get out of there. OG pulling one, a fast one. They're going to run down Super here as well. They're on to Monet. He's switching over. The Lincoln Sphere has already been popped in. There's going to be the Static Storm down. Trying to still kill this guy off. There's going to be the Lakuna oh, Boy. No. They find the kill. He's buying back, but that's also going to be no Monkey King for another 35 seconds. All right, there's no BKB here for no tail, but he does still have that the Aegis. Aegis there's the run about forward. to wear out. Oh man, if they could have just saved it for a little bit longer. Okay, round two, ding, 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 going in for it. Another jump for Monet, but they're they RP. They take him down. Ana gonna look for a killing spree, and they are gonna be able to find it. Four dead, 90 seconds. No <laughs> more fleeing. Oh, LFY, you had to. This is like the timing. Like OG, they're the strongest. I, I think comparatively. This is the strongest that they can be, and it's just over. Oh, oh no. off the back of some good decision making, a couple pickoffs in S4. <laughs> what a play. OG remained perfect. I mean, props to OG, right? They, they set themselves up for to really capitalize on that kind of mistake.